And now we are joined by Hanna Hopko. She is a former member of Ukrainian parliament and a former head of the Committee on Foreign Affairs in Verkhovna Rada. Mrs. Hopko, thanks for joining us today. It's my honor and pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. You know quite well uh, what's happening in Washington right now. You've been there uh, some time ago. And so my first question to you is as follows. Will we still have bipartisan uh, support from the U.S. Congress after midterm elections? So I would say that uh, bipartisan support, uh, if we uh, look at the polls uh, showing that uh, more than 73 percentage of the American population uh, think that U.S. should do more for Ukraine and the level of support should be even increased. So I think uh, bipartisan support uh, is key for Ukraine and it will remain after uh, midterm elections uh, because uh, it's uh, important also for U.S., Ukraine, winning the war, knowing I just came from Taiwan and Republic of Korea, and um, definitely victory of Ukraine is geopolitically important, and the actuality of Ukraine defeating Russia is even growing in uh, globally. So it's about American leadership, it's about defeating authoritarian regimes, it's about success stories, which uh, U.S. Uh, foreign policy needs after the failure of Afghanistan, in Afghanistan. And, of course, uh, defending Ukraine is a part of, uh, of national interest of the U.S. Uh, and their interest at the European continent. What happens right now uh, uh, with support for Ukraine in the Republican Party? I mean, this division inside God's own party is mainly anti-Biden game or there is something else? Some of their rhetorics is just an election related. And uh, before uh, presidential election in uh, uh, 2016, remember, we also seen um, a similar situation. And even Ukraine was dragged in uh, to the domestic policy of US. So I think we have to uh, wait uh, and after election, uh, to continue our advocacy. Personally, I uh, visited Washington, D.C. after the full-scale escalation, a genocide that Russia is committing against Ukraine already three times. And in uh, uh, December, also planning uh, with the group of uh, women, uh, public uh, civil society leaders, uh, to pay another visit to strength and bipartisan support, to talk to uh, folks in D.C., which are, uh, how to say, uh, they have different opinion on uh, U.S. policy towards Russia. So a uh, key for us is uh, to convince United States that Ukraine defeating Russia is uh, uh, important uh, to defeat Russian imperialism, not just to see regime change in Russia. Because Russian opposition, uh, or so-called opposition, they are very proactively trying to convince U.S., EU, and other world leaders that with the change of Putin, Russia will become a democratic state. But we want to say, remember in 1991, when Soviet Union was disintegrated, it was a defeat of communism, but not the defeat of colonialism. And yeah, uh, this by its key to de-imperialize Russia, also uh, to defend uh, the right for self-determination of uh, republics like uh, Bashkortostan, Tatarstan, Kalmykia, and many others, like Chechnya did after um, the Soviet Union collapse, proclaimed independence. So because for Ukraine, NATO membership in the future and I do hope that U.S. will support Ukraine ambitious in the Vilnius summit, uh, NATO summit next year, uh, to uh, join NATO. And uh, this is one security guarantee. But defeating Russia and uh, this defeat of the prison of nations is also a part of our security guarantees that the enemy will never attack us again.
he will never attack us again. We will not only de-imperialize Russia, but we will defeat it once and for all the time. Thank you, Mrs. Hopko. This was uh, Hanna Hopko, a former uh, member of Ukrainian parliament.